solid weld. Nice. So it'll uh, good you, penetration. You think it'll work for a, a trail repair if uh, we absolutely. break down after it? Absolutely, 100 percent Nice. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The last few weeks I've been working on a project that I wanted to do for such a long time, but it's always intimidated me. And I finally just jumped in and brute forced my way through it. And that is to modify my alternator to not only charge my battery, but also to operate as an emergency trail welder with the flip of a switch. There's a little bit of information out on the internet about how to convert an alternator into a welder, but usually it's just to use it as a standalone welder and doesn't work as a charger at all. So that was important to me. I think I finally got it down and the final product seems to be pretty robust and seems like it's going to work well. So I want to show you guys step by step how I did this as well as a demonstration of the alternator at the end of the video. So if this sort of content is in interesting for you guys, I really hope you like the video and you subscribe. It helps uh, the video get exposure and also motivates me to make more of these videos. So appreciate it a lot guys, enjoy. First thing we need to do is remove the case. There's just little plastic clips holding it on. First thing I want to do is go over the anatomy of your alternator. So you'll see these are our brushes. There's two in here, one here and one here. This is your positive brush and underneath is your negative brush. This is your internal voltage regulator. This is a bridge rectifier. This is your stator the coil and these are your stator leads there's three of them i went through a few alternators on this project uh, what happens is it the parts get too hot specifically what gets hot is this bridge rectifier the diodes in it and the way we're going to rectify that is by removing it completely so to do that you remove this one this bolt this bolt this bolt and this is the internal voltage regulator we're going to remove that as well because in order to weld, we can't have this trying to regulate our voltage. We need to send full 12 volts unregulated to this positive brush. What's gonna happen when we do that is it's gonna turn the electromagnets inside the alternator full blast to give us as much power as it's capable of producing. So we're gonna remove this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, as well as those four bolts on the bridge rectifier, we're gonna pull the whole assembly out. One more thing you need to do to remove the bridge rectifier and the voltage regulator is you need to desolder the leads on the stator from the clips on the bridge rectifier. I couldn't get it to heat up hot enough to get that to desolder. I'm not sure what they use, some really high temp stuff, but I had a butane torch, a soldering torch on it, just open flame and held it there for like a minute and it's still, I couldn't even indent the solder with the screwdriver. So what I ended up doing is just cutting and that worked just fine. Once you've backed all those bolts out, it should lift straight up, hopefully, like that. It comes out as one unit and you can see where I clipped the stator leads going into the bridge rectifier. From here, what you need to do is clip some uh, terminals on the end and what I did was put heat shrink over each of the stator leads coming out just so I don't have that touching the casing. Another thing we need to do in order to be able to weld with this is hook up a wire directly to our positive brush which is this piece right here. If we send 12 volts to that we are full fielding the alternator. So what I did was create this little wire and we take our bolt that we took out from here and put an isolator bushing on it, so made out of rubber, because this is gonna be ground on the alternator, and this is gonna be positive. So you don't wanna just hook up conductive metal to the positive going to a conductive bolt, otherwise we're just gonna be creating a short right there. So, isolator bushing, brush, terminal, isolator bushing, bolt, and then tighten that down. What this is, is an external bridge rectifier, and we're gonna use this to replace the stock rectifier that was burning up on me in my experimentation. Each one of these is a diode, and I think, I'm not sure what they're rated for, but it's not rated high enough for us to weld with it. I think it's something like 30 amps each. 
in here, this whole thing is rated for 200 amps, which is plenty to weld with. And it's not attached to the alternator, so it's not gonna get super hot. But if it does start getting hot, I've attached this heat sink to the bottom of it just to help dissipate some of that heat. And I also put some thermal paste under there to help conduct that heat away from the rectifier. This is my unaltered alternator. This is the alternator that I've done things to so far. This is the bottom of both alternators. And there's the bolt holes that attach it to the brackets on the engine. If I attach this rectifier to these stators, which I need to do, I can no longer mount this alternator to my engine without this interfering with the engine. So what you can do is back out these four bolt holes, one, two, three, four, and then flip it over, back off your pulley nut, you just take your impact, hold onto the pulley, it'll zip right off, and now you should be able to move the front half of the case independent from the back half of the case. If it's stuck, what you can do is put your nut back on just a little bit so you protect the threads, hold on to the front half of the case, and then smack the alternator on something solid and it will separate them. Then what you can do, here's your three stator leads, is rotate this and you can clock it to where your stator leads are on top. Because now if I have it like this, I'm not gonna be interfering with the engine. Originally what I tried to do, instead of going straight from the leads to the rectifier, is solder some wires to the stator leads, but I couldn't get it to take, so I'm just going directly like that. Once you've clocked your rec rectifier, put run your bolts through and attach your leads. And now instead of having a positive lug on the back of the alternator that your battery runs to, like this on the stock one right there, that's your old positive lug. Now your positive is right here. This is gonna be your negative instead of the casing being the negative. Okay, so we have solved the rectification process on the current. There is still the internal voltage regulator that we, we removed. We still need a voltage regulator to regulate when we're charging, which is gonna be 99% of the time. So I tried using the internal voltage regulator and just running it on a different circuit with a double pull, double throw switch, but it kept burning up the uh, voltage regulator. So now what I'm gonna be using is an external voltage regulator. And this is from an old Ford. I tried it using a GM one, but it wouldn't work for some reason. So we have four terminals on this. We have I, which we're not gonna use, A, S, and F. And I'm gonna ref reference those throughout this video. So I thought it'd be useful for you guys to actually understand the circuitry so you can troubleshoot it and actually know what's going on instead of just taking my word for it. So something that was important to me on this project was be able to use the same alternator for charging, which is what we'll be doing 99% of the time, and then welding as well. And the way we're gonna uh, run those two circuits is by using a double pole, double throw switch. And I think the way I'll explain the circuit is to just go off the switch and tell you what's happening when we push the button. So, here's the terminals. Oops, like that. When I push, there it is. When I push up on the switch, this is what happens. This pin becomes connected with this pin right here. So, the brush or the field wire that we built is connected to the F terminal on the external voltage regulator. This pin becomes connected with this pin. This is our, sorry, ignition switch, which jumps over here, and that connects with, so we have 12 volts positive going to this solenoid. And what that does is open the solenoid, the lead from our alternator, to the lead from our battery. So now we have charging. So when we push down, or when we push up on the switch, we're in charge mode. We got our voltage regulator putting out the correct voltage to our brush. And we have the solenoid open up to where our leads are connected to each other to charge. When we push down on the switch, now this pin is connected to this pin. So now our ignition switch 12 volts 
is connected to our brush wire that we built. So now it's unregulated 12 volts going to that brush. It's just telling that uh, the electromagnets just full magnetism, which is going to give us the maximum voltage. And this pin, which is our 12 volts, connects to that, but we're not going to use this. And then the final pin right here is just a ground. That's going to give us indicator lights right there and right there. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. On our external voltage regulator, we have the A, which I showed you earlier, and that's going to basically to the battery, but I'm just going to wire it to the constant duty solenoid. It's getting positive from that battery lead. The S is going to the ignition switch. The F or the field is going to the bottom pin on our switch. And then here's our rectifier that I just showed you all about. These are the stator leads going to the three of those and then positive. Half of it's going to the other side of the constant duty solenoid. And this is going to, our, going to be our welding lead where we plug in to weld. Oh, and then I also wanted to run a 110 amp outlet so I can run brushed DC power tools. Actually, the old brushed tools, a lot of people don't know, are actually AC-DC, so they can run on either. Just nobody runs them off DC. All you have to do is ground this side of the outlet, and then, guys, as I was saying this, I realized that's not right. We attach this to our, you can go to the welding lead or straight to the rectifier positive, because you want to be able to rev up your engine to give you more amps to make your grinder spin faster. So don't attach this to the positive brush, attach it to the positive output of the alternator. Another really big thing is the casing of the voltage regulator is ground. So when you attach that to your firewall, which is what I did, or wherever you attach it, make sure it's got good connection. All right guys, a final recap with actual hands-on. This is our ground. This is the top of the switch terminal. Now we're grounded. This is our field wire coming from the A terminal on the voltage regulator. And it is going to the bottom terminal right here. This is our ignition switch with the jumper cables. And we're going to go right underneath our ground. And we're jumping over the caddy corner. Is that the right terminology? Like that, to this guy right here. This is our trigger for our solenoid right there. That's going to go right here. Now we have the actual brush wire that we made on the back of our alternator. That's the last remaining wire. And then this guy is not used. So charging off welding. Here's my quick dims connection for the welder. This is just going to be going to that rectifier positive lead. This is the ground, which I'm not going to be using that ground. This is the positive lead for my battery going to that uh, right there, that lug. Whenever it senses 12 volts right there, it opens, goes through, and there's a lead cable from the battery, a charge cable from the positive, which is way over there where my battery is. And then the only thing left is on the voltage regulator, A is going to, it's that yellow wire you see going to that passenger side lug on the constant duty solenoid and then there's also s on the voltage regulator it's going to your ignition switch along with i have it tapped into this same uh, ignition switch wire that's jumpered over last thing positive negative leave that one alone and then inline fuse with a 10 amp because this is a 15 amp. So I'm gonna wire it all up and join you back here. Also, this is a potentiometer, which I was experimenting with, but I don't have it wired up right now. Just need to hook up your welding leads. I'm gonna ground right here to my hood pin. If you're interested in making hood pins for your Jeep to make a good ground as well, I have another video on how to do that. And Put it in weld mode. Actually, I'm going to just put it in off for now. I'll get it started, throttle it up, and then I will put it in weld mode. For our throttle, we're using this bad boy. Spin it to the left. 
and your RPMs go up, or you can pull out on it like that. It's just a cable actuated throttle control. Allow me to demonstrate. see what our voltage is doing on our multimeter at idle. Remember it's not charging right now because I have the button off. I've never really stick welded before. So for somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, it looks like somebody that doesn't know what they're doing welded. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to hit up a welder that lives near me and see if he wouldn't mind running a, uh, a bead for me with the alternator stick welder and we'll see how that looks. So next we're gonna try out this old brushed grinder and see if we can get it to give us a clean ground surface. Bigger rod? Yeah. Is that what I gave you? The one eighth inch? Or three That's three a 32. Gotcha, gotcha. Wanna pull that? Hey. Looks Good. a lot better than what I was trying to do, though. We're gonna get a little chip of flag off, too. Looks like. Yeah. I don't know. How's it look to you? I mean, it's like it was a little hot. Yeah. But it's a solid weld. Nice. So it'll I mean, uh, good you, penetration. You think it'll work for a, a trail repair if uh, we break down after it? Absolutely, 100%. Nice. 100%. Cool. So I just drove down here, literally down the street. I punched in on my Google map welding and it pulled up Moody's Metal Works. I texted the guy who's right here and I asked if he'd be cool with me driving down here and him running a bead with the alternator welder. He said, yeah, come on down. So what's your name? Randall Moody, Moody's Metal Works. In Dell City, Oklahoma, if you're in Oklahoma City, come on down and you need some welding done. Give us a shout. Hey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was a little bit useful, if not entertaining to you. I should probably say don't try this at home. It's very dangerous. Don't try this at home. And with that, enjoy the rest of your days, the rest of your weeks, and the rest of your lives. I'll catch you guys on the next one.